Hey everyone at home or wherever you happen to be, this is Art Explorations for Kids. So today we're going to uh, create one of my favorite animals, a kitty cat. And we're going to do so using simple shapes and I'm going to teach you how to draw through a character so that you can find the outlines and make your final picture. So what we're going to do is just start off with a simple oval here for the cat's head. So what I mean by draw through is what I'm going to show you right now. We're going to start over here. What we're going to do is draw a rounded triangle here right through this oval that we've already drawn. And we're going to do the same thing over here. Remember to keep your lines light. We're going to be erasing some of these lines in the end before we start outlining with markers. So then we're going to come in. We're going to create our eye shape. We're going to start with an oval and then sort of do a downward shaping almond. And we're going to repeat that on the right. We're going to give this kitty some big round eyes. Another circle in the middle for the pupil. Another big round eye over here. And a big pupil in the middle. Now we're just going to do a simple upside down triangle here with rounded edges. Give them a little smiley curly cue to the left, a little smiley curly cue to the right. And we'll add in some fun little whiskers. You can give your kitty however many whiskers you want, but I'm doing three. And now we're going to start doing an oval for the body. And we're going to curve a line down here because that's his neck. And there's his tummy. And then this is the back of the neck. And we're going to go around this oval. And now we need to put in some legs. So we're going to start by creating an oval that's wider at the top. And it's going to slim down at the bottom get wide at the top. Kind of looks like a carrot. And then we're going to do another oval for the paw. And we're looking at him from the side, so his other paw is going to be back here. This oval is going to be a little higher up. Still drawing through what we've already drawn. You don't have to worry about this looking messy right now because we're going to get rid of all the lines we don't need. And now we have to do his, his hip. So we'll do a circle here and another oval down here for his back paw. So now we're going to go in and add just a few details. Going to do three, oh, we're going to do two U's, sideways U's for his paws in the front and the back here. And then we're going to come around and just create a giant swoop for his tail. And make it a little bit smaller where it connects here in the back. All right, so now we want to go ahead and erase those lines that we don't need that we're just going to see as the outlines. So like here, we're going to go ahead and get rid of this part of the left ear. And then we can do the same thing over here. We only drew through to help us make sure that we got our shapes in. And just lightly brush that off. 
And then you can see here we still have this oval for the body. So we just want to go ahead and get rid of those lines that are on the inside. That was just helping us find our shape and we don't need those lines anymore. And same thing for this left paw. And then we're going to go ahead and get rid of the top of this arm carrot. We're going to get rid of this a little bit of this inside thigh line and just the end of this paw oval and repeat the same over here in his front leg. You can tap your drawing if you need to get rid of some of those extra shavings. Oh, and one detail I forgot is the inside of this kitty's ears. So I'm going to go ahead and add those real quick. And I'm just going to mimic that shape of the ear, that rounded triangle. Let's see. And for this, I want to erase this part, this part of the oval that we've already drawn for the kitty's head. Okay, all right, now we can go on. I'm gonna be using the Tombow markers and with these you have two ends. You have more of a fine liner end and then you also have a brush end which gives you the ability to do um, more with the weight of your line and can help you make wider strokes. So that's the end that we're going to be using today. So I'm going to start outlining my kitty in purple and you can pick whatever color you want and remember yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine. This is your masterpiece. We're just going over basics. I'm just giving you tools and you can make this whatever you want it to be. So we're going to start just going around all of our outlines. And you don't have to get it exactly over your pencil marks because you can still erase later. go ahead in the pupils. I want my cat's uh, pupils to be purple. You might want yours to be black or something other. Um, but just when I'm doing the pupils, I'm going to make sure that I leave just a little half circle and color in. And that little half circle is just showing a little dot of light in the kitty's eyes. And do the same thing over here. Draw a little half circle fill the rest in. And go back to outlining. Now something we want to think about is what pattern we want to give this cat. So I started off working with a spotted cat before and I think I'm going to do that again. I love kitties that have socks on. So I'm going to go ahead and draw some outlines of areas where I'm going to give him socks. I'm going to give him little colored paws. And maybe I want the tip of his tail eventually to be colored in. So I'm going to draw a line for that. And I'm going to give him a spot on his back. And a spot on his forehead. And a little
little cheek spot. I think I also want to give him a different colored chest, so I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to color in differently there from his main body color. Okay. So I think I want my kitty to have little pink ears on the inside, so I'm going to grab my pink Tombow marker and just start coloring in. And when you're coloring in, remember you want to go all the same direction with your marker so that everything is uniform and it doesn't look like you're having a giant scribbly mess everywhere. That's just, it's just one way to make your entire picture and composition come together as a whole. For this kitty, I think I want to give him some lime green spots. And sometimes what I like to do is also go around the edges so I can create a buffer like I'm doing here between the purple and the green. And this way I don't have my colors bleeding into each other. So now that I have a, an outline, I can go in and again the same direction, color in here. And depending on how large of an area you're covering in, you don't have to keep the marker pressed down on the paper either. Um, for some of these spots that I'm filling in, I'm actually just doing a downstroke, picking my marker up, and then doing another downstroke over and over again. Sometimes if you keep going back and forth with your marker, it'll oversaturate your paper and your colors will end up fuzzing out. And you'll end up with sort of a, a mess outside of your lines. So it's just a good way to practice control with your markers. So now I need to pick the body color of my kitty. And I think I'm going to go with orange. I think that'll look good with this lime green. Again, trying to make sure that I am keeping my strokes along the edges that I've already drawn so I don't end up with a scribbly mess. However, if you end up making a mark that you don't like, don't worry. You can go back in and add a few other marks. There are no mistakes. There are only Things that happen that lead you to a different result. And no matter what you do, you can't really mess up. This is your kitty, and your kitty is going to be special and unique.
So if you do find yourself starting to pick up some of the color, like if I'm starting to pick up some of the purple along here, what you can do is grab another piece of paper. You'll notice that your marker is getting a little bit of dark here and just take that extra piece of paper and clean it off and then go back to coloring. I'm gonna give my kitty just a purple nose and the last thing we need to do is pick his eye color so I think I'm gonna go with sky blue Remember, you want to leave that little half circle in there because that's our little spot of light shining off the kitty's eye. So I want to make sure not to color that in. Okay, and there we have our kitty. So if you feel like you're at a good stopping place and you're happy with your kitty, um, we can go ahead and have this be our completed piece. And if you feel like you want a little bit more of a challenge or you want to add some more to your picture, then keep following along. Okay, so if you're still following along, we're gonna go ahead and add in some background details with our kitty, right now. So I'm gonna have my kitty sitting on just kind of a, we'll have him in a grassy, grassy outdoor area. So I'm gonna add some little jagged edges for the grass. I'm gonna do our background plane here. to create like a little, I'm going to create a little safe space just around this dark purple here with my green so that, that way my colors don't bleed into each other and I don't pull the purple and make my green messy. this large chunk of grass in three sections so that way I just have smaller sections to color in and I'm not having to go like this and use up a whole lot of ink and also uh, my arm doesn't get so tired if I'm working in the smaller sections
coloring this way for the grass, I'm also helping to emphasize kind of that grassy uh, yard or um, grassy open area look with these jagged areas or um, jagged marks just continuously going up and down. Again, we're not going like side to side in every direction, just the same direction that we have the grass blades going up here. So it looks like there's a fuller grassy lawn that he's sitting on. Also remember, it's okay to have little bits of white showing. Throughout my drawing, you can see that I still have some of the paper showing, and that just gives it character. You don't have to try to just do an entire flat plane of color. It really gives it some nice texture and makes it your own. Okay, so I think I wanna go ahead and add some flowers here in the background and maybe a few clouds. So let's see, I'm gonna start with my stem over here. And maybe I'll have two larger stems coming up here. I'm going to create a pointed almond shape for a leaf and a pointed almond shape for a leaf over here and color that in. I'm going to pick a color for my flowers. We're gonna do just some round petals like this. Just a repetitive circle shape with them being a little bigger in the middle and smaller as they come off to the side. I'll give that one an extra one over there. This is gonna be the biggest one, so give it a big oval in the middle. And the other side. And I think I'm gonna color these guys in pink. Remember, how you hold these brush markers is going to depend on how wide of a line you get with them. If you have it pointing down, you're going to get a much thinner line as opposed to if you're drawing at a sideways angle, which is going to give you a wider line and allow you to cover more area. And then I'm just going to add in a few blue clouds and then I'm going to call my picture done, I think. Let's see. So I'm going to do just a few bumpy hills here. Let it go off the page. And then a line across. And then we'll do another little bumpy hill, hill, hill. 
and down. We'll have a cloud go behind the kitty. So bumpy hill, hill, hill. Line across for the bottom of the cloud. And bumpy hill and off the page. So I'm going to turn the page and color my clouds in. I'm going along the curvature of the outline that I've created. I'm going to fill in on the side there so I can make sure that I don't go off my page and create a mess on the table here. So I've created a little bit of a buffer. So now we have our completed kitty cat out here in a field. I hope you guys enjoy following along and I cannot wait to see you next time.